Hello students, welcome to this course on software engineering. I would like to introduce myself. I am uh, Padma Shriti. I am an assistant professor in the department of information science and engineering, RV College of Engineering. I would like to take this opportunity to thank VTU EduSat for giving me a chance to deliver this lecture on their EduSat program. We will now begin with what is the outline of the course. Before we actually get into what software engineering course is, it is very essential for us as students to know what is the outcome of this course. That is, what is expected for you to learn at by the end of this course. By the end of this course, you will know the outline of software engineering principles and practices that are followed in order to develop a certain software. You will also know the ethical and professional issues that are involved in developing a certain software. We are also going to describe the process of requirements gathering, which is one of the software engineering activity in the software development life cycle methodology. We are also going to classify these requirements. We are going to uh, specify the requirements as a standard document. There are specific standard documents which every software engineer needs to follow. We are going to specify that document and we are going to do requirements validation for these uh, requirements that we have taken. We are also going to learn from the design point of view the various system models that we can use as a part, part of software engineering design. We can make use of what is called as UML diagrams or unified modeling language diagrams in order to specify the design of a certain software. We are going to apply what is called as design patterns to the software design specification. We are going to differentiate between what is called as validation and what is called as defect in the part of, as a part of software engineering testing. Though testing is a part of, is a different course by itself, it is important for us to know the basic concepts of testing as a part of software engineering course. We are going to recognize the importance of various um, maintenance that is involved in the software and how, what are the challenges that are involved in evolving a certain software. We will deal with software evolution, what is software evolution, what is requirements gathering, what is ethical issue, what is professional issue. These are all jargons that we are using in the outline here, but we are going to explain it later one by one. As a part of this course, you will also learn how to estimate the cost of a certain software. You should know how to schedule project activities. You should know how to estimate the cost that is involved in the software. You are going to compute the pricing based on the requirements and uh, the tools required in order to deliver a certain software. We are going to identify parameters which we term as the quality parameters and we are going to judge whether the software, software is of a of the appreciated quality by making use of the metrics and measurements that are available to measure the software itself. We are going to know the quality standards, the standards that we have to follow in order to develop a certain software. We are also going to look upon many different practices that are involved in developing a certain software. As a part of this code, co course, you are going to learn a very important concept which is called as Agile. Agile programming is the most used programming development methodology to develop any kind of a software in the organizations these days. So, we are going to learn the need for Agile software development. We are going to learn the various Agile methods that are existing right now and we are going to apply Agile practices and terminologies and how we we are going to learn how to plan for agility, how to plan for agility. So, basically uh, as we have seen, we are going to begin the basics of the software engineering principles, even uh, ethical issues involved, the professional issues, then we are going to get into the software development life cycle methodology, which inc includes requirements, design, implementation, testing, project cost estimation and agile programming. So, this is basically what you are going to learn by the end of this course. 
So, what are we going to refer? The VTU prescribes Ian Somervilli Software Engineering 9th edition which is Pearson Education Publication which is the uh, main content which is the main reference for all the content in our uh, course delivery lectures. We are also going to use the scrum primer. Uh, as a web rep which is a web reference for ebooks for agile programming a few of the uh, requirements management and requirements engineering concepts are also taken from your uh, 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 reference books such as pressman and pankaj jalote okay, so these are the references these are on the main but the main textbook that we are going to follow is software engineering by iman uh, ian somerville okay uh, as we are all aware of the entire software engineering course is divided into five different modules. For the sake of continuity, for the sake of simplicity, uh, we the course delivery lecturers or the professors have divided this entire five module into four modules. That is, we have not left out any of the contents of the fifth, fifth module, but we have taken the concepts in the fifth module and integrated it as a part of the other modules, that is module 1 to 4, wherever it forms a fit. That is, in for to maintain the co continuity of a certain module, we would have introduced some concepts or we would have fit in the topics that are present in the module 5 into the previous four modules. I am responsible for delivering this lecture in for module 1, which involves introduction to the software engineering course itself. So, you are going to learn what is the software, what is the need for software engineering and what are the challenges that you face when you are trying to develop a certain software. We are also going to learn professional software development as a part of this course, because we are all as we graduate, we become professionals and we are going to develop softwares as professionals. The mini projects that you carry out as a part of your uh, BE degree or your MTech degree that is you are going to follow, you are supposed to follow these professional pro practices to those mini projects as well. That is why you are going to learn the concepts of software engineering and what are the ethics that are involved in developing a certain software product. We are, we also have few simple case studies that you need to know to in order to understand how a software requirement arises and how you uh, actually determine the functionality of these softwares through case studies. Additional case studies will also be provided to you throughout the course to make this course simple and easy. Software processes is the next thing that you are going to study as a part of this course. So, software processes you are going to define what a process is then you are going to define what are software processes and how would these process in involved in various software de development life cycles for the various models that exist. That is waterfall model, the incremental model and the spiral model are the three important models that we are going to cover as a part of this course. Then what every each and every model will have its own set of activities that it has to perform and these are called as the process activities. Then based on these models, we will have to follow certain general or common activities for the models where of which the first one is requirements gathering or requirements elicitation what or as we call, which comes as a part of requirements engineering. Requirements engineering processes you are going to study, requirements elicitation and analysis somebody gives you a requirement for a software development, you need to analyze what the requirement is, what are the functional components in that requirement and what are the non-functional components in that requirement as a part of requirements elicitation and analysis. Then you are going to discriminate these requirements into functional and non-functional units. Functional requirements and non-functional we will see more in detail as we go ahead in the course. We are also going to see how we represent all the requirements that we have gathered into a software requirements document. There are certain standards that we need to follow in order to give provide a requirements document for a certain software. 
if we start using the standard documents from now on for all the projects that we do from uh, from the lower semester itself it will be very easy for us uh, when we go as a professional software engineer to follow these guidelines requirements specification validation and of course requirements management like how we have a project manager we do have who is called as a requirements manager we are going to see what are the challenges that are faced by the requirements manager we are going to see what are the uh, uh, roles and responsibilities of a requirements manager how is he different from a project manager etc as a part of requirements management so this is what we are going to cover as a part of module 1 so to begin the course with very first question for any course you first need to know what is the course about so what is a software is the first question you uh, i would like to ask all of you who are uh, watching this what is a software a software is nothing but a set of programs that work together in order to provide a certain functionality that is a software okay now is it just a set of programs is it sufficient that for a software you have a, so a soft copy of the installation of the software in your system and you start working on it is it sufficient no it is actually not sufficient so we broaden the term software into by adding a documentation part of the software also into the software definition that is the software involves a set of programs that work together in order to accomplish a certain functionality along with the documentation and configuration details of the software that is required for the software to be installed on a certain system and for a user to work with it easily that is actually a software now if you ask me what a program is a program is a set of instructions that are to be followed to accomplish a certain function all these different programs all these different programs come together as a single software now what are these properties of the software software the first thing that comes is comes into our mind is something running on a system when i say a software right it is completely different from the physical systems itself a lathe machine it is different from a lathe machine it is different from a x ray machine it is different from a physical system a physical system may contain a software running in it but the characteristics and the properties of a physical system is different from the characteristics and properties of a software system the main property of software is that it is abstract you don't see it you only work with it through the interface that is provided the functionality that is running behind a certain software is not visible to the user who is using it you cannot touch it you cannot feel the software whereas for a physical system you can touch it move it etc right so software is abstract and it is intangible we should all remember that almost everything in this world is running on the software it is running it runs on softwares you take the example yeah, of a microwave oven which is run, which is in your kitchen it could be anything that you can think of it runs on the software right it uh, your uh, if you go to a bank the financial software that is running in the bank system is also a kind of a integrated software right all these things that we use day in our day out our automobiles our kitchen appliances our day to day transactional activities everything has a software that is running in it now because of this wide range of use of software depending on the context depending on the context and based on the properties of software that is it is abstract and intangible now is it a good thing or bad thing for software is up to us to judge now because it is abstract and intangible intangible in certain context it could be it could become complex why it could become complex because a software can grow to any extent there is no boundary for the software there is actually no boundary for the software you can add and add and add more functionalities as long as it allows you to add 
So it becomes large. Uh, once the software becomes large, it becomes complex. Once it becomes complex, it is very uh, usual that it becomes very difficult to understand. Yes, and it bec also becomes very difficult to change because when you don't understand what is going on in the software, you want to change a certain thing. Even in your small programs, it would be difficult to change when you don't know the exact logic of the program. So, when you think about complex systems, it would be very difficult for you to change and it would be cost a lot. You are almost in the end of the software testing phase and you really realize that you have not changed, you have not changed a certain, uh, you have not uh, uh, carried out a certain requirement functionality, you have not incorporated a certain requirement in the software and that would be very expensive to change. So, so because of the abstract and intangible properties of the software, depending on the context, the software becomes complex or it could be expensive to, to change and difficult to understand and these things actually lead to the complexity of software and these are all uh, these are all the challenges that we are going to face as software engineers now different types of software require different kinds of approaches now what are uh, software is a software now what do you mean by a different kind of software Take for example, a web application development. A web application development, you want to develop a web application which runs over the internet. The procedures and the methodology that is involved in developing a web application project is completely different from the methodology that is involved maybe in developing a embedded system software. Right? So, every software can have its own set of methodologies and certain uh, certain uh, processes that are involved which we need to follow in order to develop the software. So, different uh, softwares can require different approaches. So, when we say talk about this, we have to realize that there is no single approach to develop a certain software. It only depends the approach that you decide only depends on the kind of software that you are going to develop, that you are going to develop. Now, can softwares fail? If you have answered no, then it is wrong. Yes, softwares can fail at some times, fail sometimes, right? At times when it is not capable of handling the demands, then it can fail. What is this not hand, not capable of handling the demand? Now, because it is possible for us to uh, build large complex systems using software development methodology, it uh, the demand keeps increasing. Once a software is put into use, the customer realizes that he needs more and more requirements. He might suggest the developer to add in a few, few more functional requirements. In order to incorporate this functional requirement, the developer might make changes to the existing software. As and when he keeps changing the existing software, the structure of the software may get affected and hence the software might fail when it is trying, when, when it is in the working condition, when it is put into actual use at some point of time, it has a tendency to fail. Then, it is very easy to write software engineering programs without having to follow any kind of a standard software methodologies. And yes, if you are surprised, many organizations are doing it. They do not follow certain uh, a standard software uh, development methodologies. They just start developing a software right away. In order to maintain the standards of software development, it is always advised for us to follow standard development practices. It is not just one customer that you are building a software for, it is for a wide range of customers. It is for a wide range of customers. Today, one customer might be using, tomorrow somebody else would like to use the same software. In at, at that point of time, at that point of time, you will have to know that the second customer who is using it on his behalf should also understand what functionality you have implemented in the software. 
the reliability of the software comes down and maintenance of this software becomes very difficult when standard software engineering practices are not followed in order to develop a certain software. So, that is the that is about what a software is, what are the properties and why are these properties important and uh, is there a standard methodology for all software? No, not really, but there are standards for software development and it can definitely fail. Now, as we saw what a software is, now what is software engineering? Now, the term engineer has come into picture. Engineer is the one who makes things work, that is the general definition for an engineer. Now, what is he making work here in our context? In our context, engineer is the one who drives the development of a software product. As a result of software engineering, we get a software product as a result. Now, software engineering is a discipline of engineering. It is an engineering discipline where we are going to make use of appropriate theories and methods in order to solve a certain problem in adhering to the constraints that exist financially and in the organization. That is software engineering. Now, when I say software engineering, it is not just about learning a certain programming language and implementing it as a code. It is much more than that. It is just not the technical process of Know, development of a product. It involves project management, project cost estimation, it is the methods you can make use of different types of tools in order to develop the software. So, software engineering is the engineering discipline that you are going to uh, wherein you are going to learn all the aspects of software production not just limited to implementation of the software product. That is software engineering. Now, why do you have to know software engineering? Why do you have to know? Because we expect whatever software we use to be reliable and trustworthy and provide the functionality that we expect it to provide, we need to know software engineering. Only if you follow software engineering standard methodologies and standard practices, you will be able to produce reliable and trustworthy systems economically that is binding to the financial constraints of the software and in the deadline that is being set. Now, it is usually cheaper in the long run to use software engineering methods and techniques for the software systems that we are using. Now, why is it che cheaper? Because the software development life cycles the models for software engineering are already defined and tested. We know what kind of a model is applicable for what kind of a software. So, when we follow such a thing, when we follow such a standard or a standard model that exists, as a software engineer, I know how to make the changes when it is asked for in the software, how to go back to the previous activity during the development or during the uh, maintenance, how do we go back to previous activities that we have followed in order to develop this software and it becomes much, much cheaper for us to do it. We would have given space for incorporating the change in requirement for evolving systems in software engineering development. As a result of software engineering, we get what is called as software product. Okay. A software product can be one of the two types that which is generic products or customized products. A generic product is a general product which is aimed at any kind of a public, any anybody can use it. Uh, you can use it for your personal use, some may use it uh, for their organizations, but they are aimed to be marketed and sold to any customer who wants to buy them. The best, best example for this is our word, uh, my, uh, our office package, right? The word pack, the word, the Excel, the PPT, anybody can use it for their own purpose. It is not targeted to a specific audience. That is called as a generic software product. 
a customized software product is the one wherein it is designed and developed for a specific customer or a specific group of customers. It is the requirements that, uh, that arises from this customized product is from the customized customer who wants this kind of a uh, software. For example, our air traffic control system, traffic monitoring system, they are very specific. Traffic monitoring system is to be used on for traffic monitoring purpose only. So, it is very specific to its usage, right. Embedded control systems to be used for embedded systems, they are commissioned for the specific customer to meet his own needs organization specific softwares can be customized products. If I want to build an examination system for my college, then that is a specific customized project product for my college. Okay. So, these are the two kinds of software products that are available that is generic and customized product. Now, talking about software engineering, when you say I am studying software engineering. So, what are the certain, what are certain frequently asked questions about software engineering? This frequently FAQs about these software engineering will answer most of our questions related to the software engineering concept. Now, the first and the foremost question is when I say I have bought a software or when I want to develop a software, the first and foremost question is when you call a certain software a good software, how do you determine that it is a good software? What are the parameters or the attributes that contribute to a good software? What are the attributes of a good software? Then what are the fundamental software engineering activities? What are the activities that are involved, the major activities that are involved in developing any kind of a software? What is the difference between software engineering and computer science? Somebody might ask you this question going forward. What is the difference between software engineering and system engineering? You must have heard of both of these terms, but you would not have thought that there is a difference. So, you should know what is the difference between software engineering and system engineering. What are the key challenges fearing, facing software engineering? As I told you, software softwares because they tend to become more complex, you can add more functionalities to it, they, they tend to become more large. There are various challenges in software engineering, we will just touch upon a few key challenges. What are the costs of software engineering and what do you think is the best software engineering technique or methods depending on the software that you are trying to build and what are, what difference has the web made to software engineering. These are some of the frequently asked questions that we are going to touch upon. Starting with the attributes of a good software, you can call a software, how do you determine whether it is a good software? A good software is said to be having these character attributes or characteristics that is maintainability, dependability and security, efficiency and acceptability. These few terms uh, you would not have heard of it before. So, we will go a little bit slow uh, in defining what this maintainability dependability is. Maintainability. Now, when do you say that a software is maintainable? A software has been developed and provided for use to the customer. It is said to be maintainable when it meets the changing needs of the customer. Once you develop the software and deploy it at the customer end, then the customer might realize that he needs to change the software based on organizational pro, uh, policies or growth in technology or change in technology. Then this software should be able to incorporate that change effectively and function in the way that it is expected to function. Then we say that it is maintainable. Dependability. Dependable, we are, we are uh, software is said to be dependable when you can actually depend on that software. When you pose a certain problem to this software, it should give the appropriate solution for that problem. Then the software is said to be dependable. 
dependability in a sense I am relying on this software. It should not cause any kind of a physical or economical damage to me or to the environment in the event of any failure, in the event of any failure. We were talking about air traffic control system, dependability attribute is high in those systems because we call them as mission critical systems. Okay. This if there is a small glitch in the software and something fails, say the timing, a small gap is provided between uh, the takeoff of a flight and uh, landing of a certain flight on the same runway, if there is a software glitch, then both can coincide and the planes can collide or there, there could be some kind of a damage in the air traffic control. So, this would cause economic damage as well as physical damage due to software failure. So, if a software has to be, has to be said to be dependable, then it should provide the right output at the right time whenever it is asked for and not cause any kind of a damage during system failure. Then it is said to be secure when malicious user or we call them as unauthorized users or intruders what we call them, they should not be able to access this software system and damage the system. This generally is applicable to your web applications that you uh, develop for use over distributed systems and the internet, right. So, because internet anybody can access, anybody can access the, uh, 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 everybody and anybody can access, uh, can connect to each other over the internet, it is very important for us to build secure applications which spe for specifically the web applications. Okay. Efficiency of a good software when uh, 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 should be is defined when it can respond with minimum uh, amount of time. The processing time in uh, that is required to solve a certain problem is negligible and it utilizes only the amount of memory that it is required to use, neither more nor maybe less is ok, but not more than what it is required to. So, uh, good software is efficient when it is depending on its responsiveness, depending on its processing time and its memory utilization. So, when do you accept a software, uh, a software onto your domain, when it is deployed onto your domain? A software can be accepted when it is understandable. I have developed a software for a certain customer he can understand what I have developed for him. He can use it, use it easily without any, uh, without much complexity and it should also be compatible with other systems that they use. That is, I have built this software, maybe the version of the operating system say changes, then it should be compatible with that version also. So, we say a software is uh, has the attribute of acceptability when it is understandable, usable and compatible with the other systems that they use. Now, what are the general software process activities that are generally used for the development of any kind of a software? Four different activities are generalized for development of a software be it any type of a model, a standard model that you decide to use to develop your software based on the requirements of the software. These are the four activities that you are not going to miss out on. They might be called by different names, they might be a part of different activity name, but these are the four important activities that are for sure going to be present for when you are trying to develop a software. The first one is software specification. Software specification is the elicitation of what the software should do. What are the customer's expectation of the software? That is software specification. What does he want as a part of this software? What are the different functions that this software needs to perform? That is called as the software specification. Then the software development. Based on the specification, we design the software and develop it. 
in the general process activity both design and development come under the software development activity itself and design ning the software based on its requirement again there is a um, uh, huge set of uh, activities that are involved in the design process of software engineering which you are going to learn in the further classes but for now just know that the design is very important phase of software in order to start the development activity of the software the development involves the implementation of the software using a certain programming language okay then software validation this is a part of your what we call the software testing wherein you determine if the so software is behaving the way it should behave that is you are going to test the functionalities of the software you are going to test the functional and non functional requirements of the software during your software validation then the software evolution software evolution is the process wherein the software has the capability to meet the changing requirements of the customer as and when the requirements change or due to the deployment uh, changes in the software due to the maintenance part of the software if the systems uh, functionality needs to be changed then the software has to be uh, open enough in order to incorporate these changes in the in the uh, development activity so the basic process activity specification development validation and evolution every each one of these process activities we are going to deal deal with in detail in more and more detail in the further classes so coming back to the F faqs we have answered a few questions like what is the attribute what the fundamental activities what is the difference between engineer what is the fundamental software engineering activities and as a result of which we have got what are the different types of software products we have the generic and the custom products etc now we'll try to answer the next question which is what is the what is the difference between software engineering and computer science now this is very interesting um, we uh, as students you might all be enrolled into a computer science or information science be degree right now what is the difference between what you are learning in computer science and software engineering the first thing that you are going to answer as a part uh, 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 answer me is that as a part of computer science engineering degree we are going to learn software engineering course correct but when it comes to computer science what is it computer science is uh, is basic focus of computer science is on the fundamentals and theory aspects of a system development okay the fundamentals that you need to know the basics that you need to know for a system development not essentially a software development because the software is a part of the system software is a part of a system you are also going to learn the essentials of developing a software in the software engineering part of computer science now the big difference that is that you are that going to learn the theoretical concepts in your computer science as a part of your computer science theoretical concepts and fundamentals and basics of developing a certain system you are going to put it into practice in your software engineering you are going to put you are going to apply these concepts you are going to make use of this knowledge in order to implement a certain software as a part of your software engineering course that is the main difference between software engineering and computer science now what is the difference between software engineering and system engineering now if you have uh, not heard of system engineering system as we all know we call a computing system a system now what is we are going to use this term computing system a lot throughout this course now so we it's better uh, we know what a computing system is a computing system is a system that involves the hardware the software and the processes that are involved in running the hardware and the software of a entire system that is a, uh, it forms the computing system so the in the what are the essentials of a computing system the hardware the software and the processes involved so and of course of all these things if it has to exist the process has to exist there the memory involved in the system also comes under the computing system now 
difference between software engineering and system engineering is that now I would like to say that the software engineering is a part of system engineering. It is just one part of sy system engineering because system in engineering involves the hardware, the software and the processes that are involved in the development of the entire system as a whole. You are going to develop, you are, you are going to involve the hardware part of it, you are going to involve the software part of it, you are going to involve the interactions between the hardware and the software in order to define system engineering. Okay. So, that so software engineering comes only when you are trying to develop a software component for a certain system, for a certain system. Like I told you a uh, embedded system, like in your microwave, the software part may be something that controls the heat, something that controls the timer in your uh, microwave oven of the embedded system that requires a software. The hardware part, the hardware part of the system requires the, uh, the, the chips that are involved in it, the board that is involved in order to uh, incorporate these chips the processes that exist comes to the software engineering part and the all these chips and boards come to the hardware part. How these two manage to interact with each other is our is our entire system engineering. So, now what are the key challenges which are uh, involved in facing the uh, that you are going to face as a software engineer. Now, the challenges that are involved that itself will take a lot of time for us to, uh, it is an entire course by itself, challenges in software engineering. But due to, we can just think, give it thought about it, key challenges for software engineering. I want to develop a software. What kind of a software? Say, uh, something that works, uh, something, something like a financial software that is used to run on, a, run on the computer systems in banks. Okay. Now, for such a software, what are the challenges that I am going to face? First thing is, the first challenge is what technology that I am going to use. Today, if I use a certain technology, due to the growth in technology, tomorrow the technology might be outdated. This software should that I build should be capable of running with change in technology or on the other hand, with change in technology, I should be able to incorporate the technological change into my software. So, that is a challenge and if you are building web applications, that is if you are building some applications that run over the internet, the challenges are even more higher because there are different systems over the internet that use different types of protocols. We call them the heterogeneous systems that are running and if the same software needs to be run over all the systems, the configuration that is involved in each of these systems, the operating systems that is involved in e each of these systems, the protocols used on in each of these systems has to be uh, uh, maintaining all these things for a single software is a big challenge. You have to build software which is going to coherently work with all these changing, changing um, uh, protocols and softwares and operating systems over the internet. That is another key challenge. Then, then comes security of course, security is a big thing today. So, any software that you build should be secure enough. That is any kind of uh, automation that you do, any kind of a development that you do for your uh, uh, as a part of your software should be secure enough, secure enough so that no attacker can attack this software and cause damage to it. So, even if an attacker attacks or if there is a certain damage to the software, it should overcome the damage. So, that uh, should be the aim of our software development. Now, what are the costs of uh, software engineering? The cost of software engineering, 60 percent of the uh, overall cost is invo in involved in the development of the software product itself and another 40 percent of the cost is involved in testing the software. That is the cost, but when it comes to customized software, you remember what the customized for a specific customer, then actually when you are trying to build a customized software for a specific customer, the changes that you have to incorporate uh, to evolve the system over a period of time, 
for the customized uh, customized software it is the cost that is involved there is going to cross the development cost of the software itself so the cost of the software engineer of a surf, of a surf, certain software product cannot be uh, you cannot give a certain figure to it again it depends whether it is a custom software whether it is a generic software whether it is a software that is going to evolve over time or whether it is a software that is going to exist like this for say next 5 to 10 years etc and that cost is going to vary what are the best software engineering techniques and methods as i told you that the best software engineering techniques and methods for building a certain software does not really depend on does not really uh, depend it, it does not depend on uh, this um, technique has to be used for this kind of a software no it depends entirely on the requirements analysis the requirements phase the whatever uh, software that you are trying to develop based on the software engineering uh, engineers experience over a period of time the best techniques and methods can be incorpor incorporated for a certain software now has web made any difference to software engineering yes lot of difference has been made uh, lot of a lot of difference the web has evolved over time over time and it is um, majority of us do everything over the web so the web has made lot of difference to software engineering now we have to give more and more importance to security of the softwares that we are going to develop so security aspect is just one aspect wherein the software uh, uh, development has to concentrate on due to the evolution of web other than the maintenance of the heterogeneity across the networks across the systems that are available in the internet apart from that this security is very important for us to keep in mind so what have we uh, done in today's class is we have uh, learnt what software is what engineering is very importantly we have found the difference between computer science and software engineer uh, engineering computer science and software engineering software engineering and system engineering we have seen the attributes of a software we have seen different types of software products we are that is the generic product and the customized software is a software product we have seen what are the different uh, questions that you need to ask about software engineering when somebody when you say i am learning software engineering the frequently asked questions we have answered most of them and we have also stressed upon saying that security of a software is uh, completely important for development these days thank you very much